Hello and welcome to the Tesla Powerwall 3 Masterclass brought to you by Penrith Solar Center. I'm Jake Warner and I'm going to be your host for lesson number three, challenges and limitations with the Tesla Powerwall 3. Here's what we're going to cover in this lesson. Weight and manual handling, lack of whole home backup for three phase sites, Deployment limitations for rural or multiple dwelling sites. DC architecture and safety considerations. And phase imbalance issues in three phase homes. Let's start with weight and manual handling. Weight. The Tesla Powerwall 3 is one of the heaviest batteries currently on the market weighing in at 130 kilos. That is 15 kilos more than its predecessor, the Powerwall 2. And it is certainly going to present some installation challenges. Not that they should be a huge concern for homeowners, but as an installation company, we are certainly working our way around how to safely and effectively install the Powerwall 3. Handling. Whilst the Tesla Powerwall 3 is going to be a great battery to wire and the commissioning process should be pretty straightforward too. The elephant literally in the room is the 130 kilos of weight behind the unit. This means there can be limitations of where the battery can be installed due to accessibility. If you had the perfect spot on your home, but it's down a flight of 30 steps, you may not be able to put it there at 130 kilos. Now it's not all doom and gloom for Tesla when it comes to weight and manual handling. You see, they have actually developed their very own dolly trolley to help us move the Powerwall 3 around site. The dolly trolley is supposed to be so good that it can even have a drill attached to it and you can use the drill to raise the power wall up and down to get it to the perfect level before mounting it on a wall. So Tesla have done the hard yards and they've thought about this problem for us. However, it will still be a challenge. Mounting options. Multiple ways to mount the power wall 3 are a huge advantage for Tesla. The challenge lies with wall mounting the Powerwall 3. Your installer will need to ensure that the wall selected is able to hold the weight of the battery. If you're unsure, it's always best to floor mount the Powerwall 3. So the battery can actually be wall mounted and the bracket is wide enough to collect two studs on most Australian built homes. Of course, if you have a brick or a Besser block wall, that's a fantastic option too. If you're unsure about mounting the battery on the wall, it's always best to use the floor mounted approach, which still does use the wall mounted bracket, but we mount the bracket low enough so that the bottom of the power wall contacts the ground and most of the weight of the battery is actually dispersed through the ground opposed to the wall. Lack of whole home backup for three phase sites. So if you're watching this and you have a single phase home, this isn't a concern for you because you'll be getting full home backup and what a great experience that is. If you have a three phase home, here's a limitation for you. Backup. Selected backup is about as good as it gets with three phase sites. Some of Powerwall's competitors, such as the Fronius BYD combo, are able to provide full three phase home backup. True three phase solution. Whilst the Tesla Powerwall 3 does work great on a three phase site, it's well known that the Powerwall 3 is not a genuine three phase solution. The Powerwall 3 in normal operation, when the grid is tied to your home, which is any time other than a blackout, will supply energy to your entire home. So you don't have to stress about the Powerwall 3 being single phase and the rest of your other two phases receiving energy out of the battery. Your net meter or your smart meter on your home will do the heavy lifting for you and for the Powerwall to ensure that the energy out of the Powerwall is used in the home. Now, that doesn't mean when you have a blackout that you're going to have full home backup. The backup is limited to selected circuits, which is limited to single phase backup. So for example, if you had lights, power, fridge and internet, 
we would combine them all on one phase, maybe distribute some of the loads that were on that phase. Let's use A phase for example. We might take off oven and put it on B phase and make A phase your dedicated backup phase of your home. So if you do have a three phase site, it would be important that you know when our installers rock up on the day to do the install, what you would like backed up. That way we can accurately assign the selected circuits to the backup phase. Deployment limitations for rural or multi-dwelling sites. Tesla doing Tesla things. One of the greatest features of the Powerwall 2 was the Nurio meter. This remote power meter meant that the Powerwall 2 could be installed effectively on rural sites and multi-dwelling sites without excessive trenching and electrical system modifications. Tesla decided not to continue the relationship with Nurio for the Powerwall 3, which is fine, except they've launched the battery without building their own version of the meter, meaning not every site will be physically able to have a Powerwall 3 installed. This is one area where the Powerwall 2 is actually a better product than the Powerwall 3. Now, both the Powerwall 2 and the Powerwall 3 do use the Gateway 2, which is the brains of the Powerwall, whether it be the 2 or the 3, and is always mounted right next to your switchboard. This product is where the Nurio meter used to connect into. Now the Nurio meter can physically still work with the Powerwall 3. However, Tesla chose to not continue the relationship with Nurio and instead opted to build their own meter internally. I have great faith that when this meter comes out, it will be a fantastic product. But in the meantime, Powerwall 3 won't be usable on every site. And here's an example of where it won't work. If you had a house and then you had a shed that was 30 or 50 meters away and the shed had solar panels on it, but you wanted to put the battery on the home and capture that solar generation, with Powerwall 3, you won't be able to do that. With Powerwall 3 and a Nurio meter, you were able to have the Powerwall on your home and use that wireless Nurio meter to measure the solar generation on that shed. Hopefully Tesla work really hard and get us a Nurio meter replacement before 2025. DC architecture and safety considerations. DC architecture is not the safest architecture available. The architecture that the Powerwall 3 is built on is DC, and whilst may have some distinct advantages with DC to DC charging and round trip efficiencies, it is no match for AC architecture when it comes to safety. AC architecture inherently has rapid shutdown inbuilt. This is a feature where you can switch off the solar at the switchboard and every panel shuts off at panel level. Powerwall 3 and DC architecture in general does not have this option available. So when you turn off the Powerwall 3 at the ground, you will still have energy coming from the panels all the way down to your Powerwall 3. If this is not something that concerns you, then play on. However, if you want the very safest architecture in the solar industry, you'll want to look at AC architecture. Bollards are ugly. Imagine having the nicest Tesla Powerwall 3 installation and then having an ugly yellow bollard in front of your battery. This could be the reality if you install the Tesla Powerwall 3 in your garage. Now, to be clear, Powerwall 3 is not the only battery that needs a bollard installed in front of it if it's possible for you to have a motor vehicle impact or contact your home battery. Most batteries will need them, but it is a consideration for if you thought you were going to mount your battery, maybe at the end of your garage where you drive in and have the potential to hit the battery. If you put the battery outside, chances are you won't actually need a bollard. And if you got the battery installed by someone like Penrith Solar Center, who likes to conceal all cables in wall cavities and make sure that the install is as perfect as it can be, the bollard really just wrecks the aesthetics. Installation quality is always more important than price. Tesla has a mission to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. Unfortunately, this means that they want every installer to have access to their product. 
This means low quality installations and it will be difficult for consumers to differentiate between solar companies because they are all selling Powerwall 3. How are you going to know who's going to do the best job of installing your Powerwall 3? And how are you going to know that company's going to be there to provide service long term for you? In my experience with selling Tesla products, one of the biggest downsides is, is that consumers like you guys watching this video will always think it's going to come down to price. We've lost jobs in the past, which is our fault for not showing our value over a couple of hundred dollars. And that client has come back to us in the future begging us to fix their battery problem that they have. Tesla is always going to be a great product, but what is more important than having a great product like Tesla is having a knowledgeable, well-equipped solar company that can install that product to the best of their ability and get it right first time every time. 130 kilos on your wall and high voltage DC architecture is not something that you want to be rolling the dice on over a couple of hundred dollars with a cheaper installer who doesn't have a factory and is slapping this on your wall out of the back of his van. Phase imbalance issues in three phase homes. Five kilowatt phase imbalance rule. In our earlier lessons, we went over phases and why it's important to know what phase your home is, if it's single phase or three phase. And we've openly said that if you have a single phase home, it is a no brainer for you to install Powerwall 3. But if you have a three phase home, this is something that you have to know about. This ruling of five kilowatt phase imbalancement means that your Powerwall 3 may need to be locked to a five kilowatt inverter limit. Alternatively, you might need to install additional solar or batteries on other phases to comply with this ruling. Now, we've already seen quotes out there from competitors who are offering Powerwall 3 on a three phase home with a lot of solar and they're going to give you the 10 kilowatt option. The other thing they're going to do is they're also going to give you a 5 kilowatt inverter on A phase and let's say a 5 kilowatt inverter on C phase if your power wall is going on B phase. They want to put panels on those as well. But I can tell you now, buying three string inverters, which is ultimately what you're doing, is not going to be the most cost effective way and it's not going to be the most reliable way and you'll never get that system to monitor and behave as one solar system. If this is the option you're faced with, with locking your inverter on your power wall to five kilowatts, we are always going to suggest to do a great three phase solution like N phase micro inverters on your home and do the Tesla power wall three over the top of it. That way we'll be able to get the power wall three to monitor the entire solar installation. We'll AC couple the power wall three to the end phase micro inverter system. And that way we can hopefully still use the 10 kilowatts of inverter capacity inside your power wall three, which has some great advantages too. So three phase sites need a little more design work and a little more consideration. Is this really the best solution on the market for a three-phase home? Powerwall 3 is a great solution for a three-phase home, especially when doing multiple power walls on different phases. However, there are alternatives that offer potentially more value to a customer on a three-phase site, such as an N-phase microinverter system. I just touched on it on the previous point, but I want to just touch on it one more time. If you have a three phase house and you're going to install power walls on your home, if you did three power walls on a three phase home and one power wall per phase, this is actually the perfect solution. Means you can have the full 10 kilowatts of each power wall, 10 kilowatts on A phase, 10 kilowatts on B phase, and 10 kilowatts on C phase. You can also have up to 60 kilowatts of solar on your roof. If you're lucky enough to have a home that's gonna handle 60 kilowatts of solar on your roof, then half your luck. Load it to the brim and never look back at another power bill ever again. However, if your bills are slightly smaller and your roof space doesn't permit that, and maybe you have a three phase home where you can only justify doing one power wall, I would really suggest 
alternate three-phase solutions, such as the N-phase microinverter solutions with the N-phase batteries. Although they are still a single-phase battery, you can more cost-effectively than a power wall do one battery per phase, and you can get yourself 15 kilowatt hours of storage across three phases and not break any rules with your local DNSP. Thank you for joining me with lesson three on the Tesla Powerwall 3 Masterclass. Coming up next will be lesson four, which we're going to be diving into designing solar with the Powerwall 3. We'll see you there.